to see me win I was sick unto death I thought it was the end Jesus touched me Made me new And I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through See me now Should have seen me when I was sick unto death
Thank you so very much to our singers for ushering us into the presence of Almighty God. What a great atmosphere and a great way in which we come to give God glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for worshiping God with us here at the fountain. We hope and pray you will enjoy this service of worship. Let's ask God's presence to be with us even the more. The word of the Lord says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. May we pray. Father, we say take further control of this service. Let your spirit be made known among us. Have your way in this place. And we promise to give you glory, honor, and praise. These and all other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, singers. Take us further into the presence of Almighty God as we worship and give him glory. Oh, the thing. 
thank you again to our fountain singers and thank you to our choir. We thank God for all of our men, all of our ladies, all of those who have been leading us in our time of praise and worship, giving God the glory, the honor and the praise. And thank you for those of you who have been listening, who've been watching, who've been sharing. Uh, we want to say thank you for helping us as we have praised and worshiped God, because, you know, the Bible tells us wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. We feel his presence with us on today. Today, I invite you to continuously uh, serve the Lord with joy and with gladness as we're coming towards the end of our summer months. And we're so grateful that our children are making their way back to school. Uh, let's make sure that we teach them all the proper protocols that they need to keep themselves safe from all sorts of viruses and all sorts of things that can enter into their world. We must remind ourselves before we let our children out in every morning, every day, let's cover them with prayer, let's cover them with love and let them know that they'll be taken care of for that day. And then let's remind ourselves that God promised he will take care of us because his banner over us is love. And you know, the Bible teaches us that love covers a multitude of sins. And we're so grateful for the love that God gives to us that it's so good, we can't keep it to ourselves. We have to share it with someone else. So I encourage you as we all make an effort to share the love of God with those that we meet. You know, God loved us so much that he saw our situation. He saw the plight that we were in and he had a redemptive word for us. Matter of fact, that word became flesh, Jesus the Christ, our savior. And here today we find in this book, this letter that is written to the Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses one through eight from the New Living Translation. Paul uh, pretty much writes throughout the New Testament. We're not exactly sure who the author is of Hebrews, but the author of this text gives us some concluding words. And so I have entitled this sermon, Ending on That Note, Ending on That Note. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the many ways you've blessed us. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. And we say, take control of us. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you for being our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Ending on that note. You know, it's amazing that whenever we hear a choir sing, whenever we uh, see someone finish a performance, uh, especially one that is either vocal or musical, they end on a note. And it's always a note that lets us remember. It's a note that takes us out. It's a note sometimes that is pretty abrupt. Other times it may sustain itself and carry on, but it's a note that you and I will remember. And so the writer of the text, he ends on a note to tell us how we should go forth and how we should remember and how when his end has come, he leaves them some good words. And so today I want to preach a message that I have entitled Ending on That Note. Have you heard some of those great classical songs that we sing? Some of the great classical gospels that are always the ones that stay rooted in our spirits. Those great songs that we sing that talk about God's goodness, they always end on a note to take you either to a crescendo of praise or leave you thinking about how good God is. It is important for all of us, whenever we make a departure from someplace, whenever we have finished a task, whenever we have finished a course, we always want to make sure we end on a good note. I don't know about you, but I can remember my days in athletics. One of the things that we used to always do is make sure when you get down to the very last seconds of the game or the last point, you want to make sure it's a memorable moment. And so our text today leaves us with a memorable moment, a moment in which we can say that's a great note to end on. Our text begins by saying, uh, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. The writer of this passage, he gives us some uh, departing words. He gives us some words that he wants us always to allow to be our governing uh, thoughts, our governing behaviors. And he says, keep on loving each other, regardless what happens, regardless what comes your way, keep on loving each other. Because when we keep on loving each other, it shows and it demonstrates to the world that we have the love of God deep down in our hearts. You know, when Jesus left his disciples, he left them on a cloud. And when he left on that cloud, he said that I want you to go and make disciples. And then once he had gone away and disappeared, the angel said, why are you standing here gazing? The same one that you see leaving is coming back in like manner. 
So go and do the work he's called you to do. You know, all of us have to remind ourselves how Christ ended on a good note. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He said, Lord, into thy hands I commend my spirit. As he ended on a good note, his ministry here, let's make sure that we hear the concluding words to tell us to love each other. You know, in this life, things can get between us. Things can come among us. But we must make sure anytime there's a misunderstanding, anytime someone has found themselves a little bit confused about a situation, love should always prevail. You know, when love prevails, it causes us to always think, well, the person didn't really mean it that way. It just didn't come out right. Whenever we realize that a person responds to us out of love, we don't go with a negative, but we go with a positive say, OK, maybe they didn't say it quite right. Or maybe I didn't understand clearly what they were trying to articulate. This text says, keep on loving each other. Secondly, he says, don't forget to show hospitality to strangers in our world in which we live. We must remind ourselves that strangers are with those people and are those people who come among us who we're not quite uh, associated and acquainted with yet. You know, strangers are very common in our contemporary day in our age because you always meet people that you don't know. The world is so big. I know in our geographical locale, you can meet someone every day that you've never seen before. Because the world is just so big. There are so many people that are coming into Wake County. It lets us see uh, when we look at our demographics and our statistical data, there are people who are moving into Wake County every day. So every day you can meet a stranger. The text begins to help us to know that after we love each other as brothers and sisters, secondly, we have to show hospitality to strangers. You know, the ministry of hospitality is one of the greatest ministries that uh, we find throughout the Bible. Um, whenever uh, we see uh, persons going into different regions and if they were visiting, you see hospitality. Remember when Moses finds himself on the backside of the desert, when Moses has been kicked out of Pharaoh's house, when Moses has been sentenced and banished away, it was those daughters of Jephro that showed him hospitality, the hospitality of giving him water, the hospitality of saying, we don't know you, but I'm certain our father will welcome you. We must remind ourselves whenever we meet people, we have to show hospitality. Uh, this is so profound because as we begin our academic school year, we will have students in our class. We will have colleagues that we've never met before, never seen before. We have so many people who have moved here from foreign countries and lands. We have to show them hospitality, to show them that I have the love of God on the inside of me and I wanna share that same love with you. He says, show hospitality because some of you have entertained angels without realizing it. Isn't that awesome? You know how sometimes we could be entertaining angels, but don't realize it. You know, an angel is a messenger from God. God sends us messengers, sometimes in human form, sometimes in situations and circumstances. God sends us a message and he tells them, be careful how you treat people because you might be entertaining angels and you just don't realize it. You know, that tells me that I need to treat everybody with love and dignity, because if there's an angel who is coming to greet me, that could be the message that God wants me to have. But I have to be open to receive that message. I have to show hospitality. I have to show friendliness. I have to show godly kindness to the person as opposed to saying, I don't know you. Why should I trust you? Why should I welcome you in my world? We must learn to show hospitality. The Bible says, because sometimes we entertain angels and don't even realize it. You know, we have to make sure that the stranger that is among us, the one that we don't know, that we show them hospitality because it is through and by that love, that hospitality, we can win them to God and God can be glorified in our lives. He says, remember those who are in prison. He goes from hospitality of strangers to say, remember those who are in prison. When we begin to look at the statistical data of those that are incarcerated, we must ask ourselves the question, what have I done to visit those who are incarcerated? Jesus tells us, whatever you've done to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you've also done to me. 
the parable that comes to us that in that last day, uh, they will say, Lord, when have we done all of these things? When have we not? Jesus says, whatever you've done to the least of these, my brothers, you've also done it unto me. We must remind ourselves men and women have been incarcerated. Some of them have been incarcerated, not because of any guilt, but because they've been framed. Some of them have been incarcerated because of circumstances and situations that someone has given a false testimony. We're now beginning to learn and uncover and discover a little bit more about the life and about the death of Emmett Till. How so many of us realize that there were persons who corroborated stories to make him appear to be guilty when he was probably innocent. We must remind ourselves there are people who are innocently incarcerated. And some people are in prison in their minds and in their spirits. There are so many people have been in prison because someone has given them the word. Someone has said to them things that have caused them to feel shut in and shut out. Persons who are in prison, we must remind ourselves that we are to visit them. We are to take to them the word of God. We're to show hospitality. We're to write them letters. We're to write the governor on their behalf. We're to ask for their sentences to be commuted. We're to ask for their sentences to be totally done away with because of new evidence that has been produced. I'm so happy that forensics have taught us that we can go back and look at some cold cases and old cases and find out that the persons were totally innocent because of all of the information that has been presented. We must remind ourselves that God wants us to visit those who are in prison. There are people in prison who are there because of the crimes they've done, and that's the place for them to be so they don't hurt anybody else. But that also means they need to know the love of Jesus as well. We forget that ministry is not just for those who we feel deserve it, but it's for those who have sinned. It is for those who've come short of the glory. It's for those who have done things that none of us ever want to hear about or speak about. But they too need to know that God loves them and God has a gospel that will free them of their sins and will deliver them from, them from themselves and from the damnation of hell. And they can find salvation through and by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text says, remember those who are in prison as if you were there yourself. Too often times we forget the Bible teaches us do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It would be a horrible thing if any of us found ourselves incarcerated and no one came to visit us, found ourselves incarcerated. Nobody ever sends us a letter, finds ourselves in car find ourselves incarcerated and no one sends us a Christmas gift or Thanksgiving card or just a note to say, I've been praying for you. You know, oftentimes we forget if we change positions with a person, we can really do great ministry. I encourage us to do it. Paul always teaches us throughout the New Testament. Barnabas and Saul and all of those disciples, all of those apostles of Jesus Christ, they went to prison, but there were those who visited them because they knew the value. And Paul wrote some of the greatest encyclical letters while he was incarcerated. Remember how Martin Luther King wrote a letter from a Birmingham jail. Remember how all of those persons who protested to the riots that have taken place through all of the bigotry, through all of the hatred that was in the 50s and the 60s. And even in our modern day times, people have been arrested for standing up for what is right. And we must think about those New Testament Christians who were in prison because they believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must remind ourselves, do for others as you would have someone do to you. He says, also remember those who've been mistreated as though you feel their pains in your own body. Look at the mistreatment that have happened to people. When we begin to chronicle and look at all the things that have happened, when we begin to see all the people who have been innocently murdered, victimized because of somebody's careless behavior, because of someone only looking out for themselves and not others, it reminds us that we must advocate for those who have been mistreated. People have been mistreated on all sides of life. This becomes an ending note that all of us need to think about. You know, too often times we forget that God wants us to advocate for those 
who sometimes can't advocate for themselves. You know, people have been mistreated, people have been victimized, in so much so that they have post-traumatic stress in a way that they cannot really get themselves moving forward, so we need to help them move. The text says how God wants us to end on a good note. In verse four, he says, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. He tells us about the sanctity of the home. He talks to us about how we are to live with fidelity, how we're to have a relationship with God that is so strong that we don't worship idols. We have a relationship with our spouse in that we are committed to the relationship and that nothing can come between us. You remember how all of us used to sing those beautiful love songs. Ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley <laughs> wide enough, ain't no river deep enough to keep me from you. You know, we must remind ourselves and rekindle how God has told us through these ending comments, ending on a good note, to stay committed to that which God has given to you. He tells us something that all of us need to hear. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you, and neither will I abandon you. We all know the Bible tells us the love of money is the root of all evils. We must think about in our contemporary times that even though money is needed, even though financial resources, we should not love money more than we love God and more than we love relationships. When our relationship with God is intact, our relationship with everyone else is as well. We don't have to worry about those situations of always looking out for money. You remember years ago, there was a song that was saying money, money, money. Everybody got to have it. They call it that mean green, the almighty dollar. We must remind ourselves God is the only almighty. The dollar will fail. The Bible tells us all these things on heaven and earth will pass away because God is going to make all things new. He shows us and he reminds us that God's love will never fail. It will never abandon us. And for that reason, we have to hold on and remember how we can end on a good note. He says, the Lord is my helper, so I will not fear. What can man do unto me? As he begins to quote that God is our helper. When we know God is our helper, we know man can't do anything to us. You might be able to hurt our body, but nobody can determine where our soul will go if we have surrendered to Almighty God. When we've surrendered to Almighty God, our souls will always be at peace with God. A good ending note tells us, put our ultimate faith and trust in God. Let's be committed to relationships that God has given to us. Let's not put material possessions before God nor before anyone else. Let's make sure we treat each other with hospitality and that we welcome each other. Let's remember to love each other. And then he tells us, remember your leaders who have taught you the word of God. Think of all the good has come from their lives and follow them as an example in your faith. He ends on a good note. He tells us, remember those who have taught you the great lessons of faith. Remember those who have labored among you. Honor them, respect them, and do what they have done. Share the good news of the gospel with someone else. It is always important for all of us to pass on what God has given to us. Just as we have others who have led us, we in turn must become leaders for others. He reminds us, remember those who are the leaders among you who labor in the word. We have to thank God for our parents. We have to thank God for our Sunday school teachers. We have to thank God for those who have taught us in the ways of the Lord. We have to thank God for those who have labored hard, as they call in the vineyard, to do what God has asked us to do, and that is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. When you and I share the good news of Jesus Christ, when we do all the things that we've been asked to do, because he finishes all up, and he ends on a good note by saying, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Now that's a good note to end on. It's always good to end on the note that Jesus is the same. He's the same as he was yesterday. Oh, I'm talking about how God has done great and wonderful things. You remember on yesterday or days gone by, how he healed a woman with the issue of blood, 
how he healed blind Bartimaeus, how he turned water into wine, how he raised up the widow of Nain's son, how he did so many great and marvelous things yesterday, how he called Lazarus back from the dead. Oh, on yesterday, God has done so many things. All we have to do is look back and think about all that he has done. He says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today. Now we must remind ourselves how good God is to us today because he woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. He gave us the activity of our limbs. He gave us the ability to be able to articulate. He gave us the wherewithal that we can think with our minds. God has been good to us today. He has given us sight that we can see the beautiful creation that God has made. God has given us a sense of touch that we can feel what's happening around us, that we can put our hands in the hands of other people. And then he says he's the same forevermore. That means the future. God is responsible for our past, our present and our future. But I stopped by to remind us the best is yet to come because he ends on a good note. The good note is say, think about all that I've done in the past, all that I'm doing right now and what I'm about to do with you. We must remind ourselves that God always lets us hear the message ending on a good note. Oh, the good note is the note that reminds us that God will never leave us nor forsake us. God promises he'll be with there. He'll be there with us through the thick and the in, the thick and the thin, the in and the outs. God promised he'll always be with us. And I want to remind you, God promises that he loves you and that he loves me. And all we have to do is receive his free gift of salvation because Jesus paid the price for us at Calvary. And when we receive that gift of love, we ought to tell somebody else about it. If you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to please email it and let us know that you have joined the kingdom of God. And that if you'd like to become a part of our fellowship here at the fountain, we stand with arms wide open saying, come. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Just come on. And today, if you want us to pray for you and to pray with you, we invite you to email us at prayer at the fountain of Raleigh.org. We want to pray you through. We want to walk with you through. We want you to know that God is never going to leave you alone. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's a good note to end on. And today, I'd like to remind you that God has great blessings in store for you because you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for blessing us to be in your house. We thank you for allowing us to end this service on a good note. The note of knowing that you promise that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you for reminding us of that blessed assurance. And God, we thank you for strengthening us. Now be with us as we traverse life and as we go through this way. And God, we ask that you will strengthen us that we might encourage someone else. Now, God, we thank you that your word will go forth and accomplish the thing whereunto you have sent it, and it shall not return unto you void. So we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. And now unto him, the great shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless, preserve, and keep you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. May he bless you in your leisure, your labor, your joys, and your sorrows, and give you bright hope for today and tomorrow. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I want to end on a good note to remind you that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And he has some great blessings in store for you because you are exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And we'll see you real soon. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.